When I was a kid, I had this mild fear that one day in a sinister evil laboratory, a mad scientist who concocted a super acid would one day accidentally spill it on the floor and it would begin its long journey of eating through the earth. This is of course not possible. The chemical world may have different rules than our world, but it still yearns for the same thing, stability. The reason it's easier to sit rather than stand is the same reason wood burns and metal corrodes. The end result is more stable and takes less energy than the initial state. Basically, just like us, if chemicals have the opportunity to make their lives more easy or stable, they'll take it. But what dictates the stability of the chemical world? The stability of a molecule relies on the strength or energy within the bonds holding it together. These bonds are formed from electrostatic attraction between protons and electrons. And just like with magnets, this attraction gets stronger the closer they are together. Molecules are most stable when all the electrons are as close to as many protons as they can be. However, there are a ton of factors or rules that dictate how close electrons can be to specific nuclei of atoms. The most important of these factors is called electronegativity. As an atom increases in size, it also increases the number of electrons orbiting around it. Because electrons have like charges, they don't like to be near each other. If enough electrons begin orbiting our nucleus, eventually the attraction of the nucleus isn't worth the repulsion of all these electrons, at which point new electrons start accumulating in another outer shell. This is important because now every new electron that is added not only feels the attraction of the protons in the nucleus, but also the repulsion of the electrons in between them. Electronegativity can be thought as the ratio between protons in the nucleus and the electron shells underneath the valence shell. It's not exact, but it fits pretty well. This means that these elements have higher proton to electron shell ratios, meaning electrons, if given a choice, would prefer to spend their time here. So then, what are acids? For this, I'm going to stick to the most common and most prevalent description of acids and their behavior. The bronsted lorry description states that an acid is a molecule that can donate a proton or hydrogen atom. What does that mean? An acid is a naturally unstable molecule. The more unstable it is, the more acidic or corrosive it is. Just like you and me, acids don't want to be unstable or unhappy. So, if given the opportunity, they'll react with something to change that. But why are acids unstable? If we look at the most common or abundant acids, we see a trend. A hydrogen atom bonded to an electronegative atom. Now remember, electrons want to be as close to as many protons as they can be. That's how we form the most stable molecule. So if we imagine the point of view of these electrons bound to the hydrogen, they may be thinking something along the lines of, Why am I hanging out with this loser? Just give me any excuse, any excuse to ditch this guy so I can go hang out with all those Chad protons over there. But these electrons have a responsibility to hang out with Harold Hydrogen, and they can't ditch him for no reason. So this bond isn't very strong. However, if another molecule shows up with another pair of electrons to hang out with Harold, then these electrons will go, oh hey, have you met Harold? He's really great. Well, he's your problem now. Bye. This is essentially what acids do. They exist in a constant state of instability, always looking for a lone electron pair to pawn off their extra hydrogen to stabilize themselves. If the person they can pawn off their hydrogen to is more stable with it than the acid, well then they do it. Hence, strong acids are very unstable and can force almost anyone to take their hydrogens. Additionally, a single molecule of acid can only burn another single molecule. So that's why acids don't just keep burning through the earth. Eventually, it runs out of protons to give. But why do acids burn us? A chemical and thermal burn produce the same result. They destroy proteins. Proteins are the most important biological molecules in our bodies. They do essentially everything that keeps you alive. The reason they can do these things is because they are perfectly and exactly folded in a very precise shape. 
This shape is maintained by intermolecular forces and interactions, the strongest of which are salt bridges and hydrogen bonds. Now I won't go super chemistry on you, but every amino acid, the things that make proteins, has a carboxyl group, which is the acid part of amino acid. But in proteins, the carboxyl group is often missing its acidic hydrogen, and thus has an abundance of electrons and a negative charge. This negative charge can then bond ionically to an amine ion of another amino acid, or hydrogen bond with an alcohol of some other amino acid. These interactions play an important role in keeping a protein folded together. However, if we introduce an acid, this abundance of electrons on the carboxylate ion is a prime location to unload the acidic proton. So this carboxylate ion receives the acidic proton, becomes a simple carboxyl group, and loses its negative charge. If enough acid reacts with enough ions, the forces holding the protein together will fail, and it will unfold into a new shape. Without its original shape, it can no longer do its job, and if enough proteins become corrupted, then the cell becomes a useless mass of organic tissue, a burn. Bases do the same thing, but in a different manner. Instead of donating a proton to the carboxylate ion, they rip a proton from the amine ion. However, unlike acids, most bases have a hydroxyl group that will turn into water after the reaction. This water can then work with the base to start hydrolyzing or splitting other organic bonds via alkaline hydrolysis. So theoretically, if you needed to dispose of a body, a strong base is the better option as it will be a little faster for dissolving some components. Lastly, how can we store these caustic substances in simple plastic containers? Well, remember, it's all about the electron's happiness. The simplest plastic, polyethylene, just looks like this. Now, if you were an acid, there's no free electrons to take Harold away from you you'd have to rip apart a bond to get rid of Harold, which is possible, but only by the absolute strongest of acids and if given some heat energy to help loosen up those bonds. The same thing happens with bases. None of these electrons would be happy giving up their proton to the base, so there's no reaction. Thus, almost all acids and bases don't eat through plastic, but have no issue burning us.